Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jack and I'd like to officially welcome you all to my part 6 of my Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets playthrough for PS2. So, in the last part we ultimately just went through our first night at Hogwarts, going th through the general building and then visiting friend George's shop for a bit to buy a few things, but now it's officially our first day of classes, so it's time to just head straight down, but I think there's a chest. Oh yeah, here it is. Here we go. Chest, which... Yep, another wizard card, so here we go. That would be wizard card number... 15. Pretty good. Still a long way to go, though, so let's just head down, then. Morning, Ron. Do you know what class we've got first? I heard that it's flying. You heard right. I'll meet you downstairs in the entrance hall. Yep, so our first day of classes, which is mainly just flying then, so let's just head down. You know, it's always super weird how they require a loading screen to get into most places, but in between the Gryffindor common room and this general vicinity, there is no loading screen. Certainly very weird to say, to say the least, so, but that's not important right now, so let's just head out and get started. Okay then, so yeah, Ron's waiting for us. Well, he's mainly waiting for the stairs, but as soon as they, they show up, he'll just go down also. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, as soon as it goes, as you go down there, the stairs will just immediately follow then. It's pretty easy. You never go up nearly as fast when you're going up the stairs, but I guess that that's just the nature of things. But yeah, a few areas over here. Objects like this one can be, can be hit in order to try and find more beams then. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty good. I don't think that you can just, you know, go and visit friend George's shop whenever whenever it's daytime because, let's face it, they have classes and they can't be there 24-7. You can only visit it at night. Percy won't be there, but neither will friend George, so it's basically a waste of time then on, when Harry. you're trying to find let's it. Go outside. So let's just go to the entrance hall. Nick, what's the matter? Uh, a matter of no importance. It's just that Sir Properly Decapitated Podmore won't let me join the Headless Hunt. Apparently, they only accept huntsmen whose heads have completely parted company with their bodies. I'm sorry to hear that. Not to worry, young Potter. As I said, it's a matter of no importance. <sighs> yeah. No kidding. Why did we even have to have that right now? If it's really a matter of no importance, then why did, did he just say it to us? So, let's just brush it off and just Hello, get Harry. out there. Let's go outside to the flying pit. We don't want Madame Hooch to be angry with us on our first day. Yeah, let's go. Yep. So... Flying lessons with Hooch next, Harry. I'll meet you outside the flying pit. Yeah. So, so yeah, we got plenty of time, so I'm just going to show you guys some interesting things. Yeah, bushes like, like this one will likely contain contain beans and other sorts of items. And like I said, just like when, when we purchased the stink pellets, we all, we were ultimately able to to, to get a few... To, they, they ultimately would, would start including it. Same thing goes for the non-explodable luminous balloons. You'll probably not use those nearly as often, but still interesting to just get them in that sense. So, here we go. Just, just go right here, and it's a lot easier to get these beans when when you currently lack them, in a sense. But before that, you'll have all the time in the world to just keep on looking for more. So, let's see, and well, this is something interesting, also. I collect famous witches and wizards cards. Do you? I'll give you card number seventy-five, Mungo Bonham, for number thirteen, Andros the Invincible. I don't have that card. <sighs> Yeah, expect to hear that a lot, essentially, because because you'll see these little trio, this little trio of people and others just like them just scattered throughout Hogwarts throughout the entire game. They'll usually say, "Oh, I have a card that card that I want to trade you for," but then you'll have to give me another one in exchange. But and you'll ultimately 
there's a good chance you won't have it then in that sense, so kind of sucks, but wait, that's just the nature of the game. But anyway, flying pitch is right this way, but before we do, I'm going to show you guys a little something very interesting. There's a little glitch in this in this part of the game very specifically. You go up to this door and normally it'll just be completely locked or you won't be able to interact with it at all. But in this part of the game, you can interact with it. You open it up and then let's see where it leads. It'll just lead us all the way, yeah, all the way up to this little area right right here. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? You can see incredibly far. Now, if I had to guess, I'd probably say that the, when they were doing this, they expected to make a function where you could just shimmy ar around this entire area right here and get to, to interesting stuff in, in the castle lickety-split. But then after they, they ultimately decided not to implement that feature, this area was cut off. But for whatever reason, when they were completely compiling this level, they forgot to take it out specifically at this stage in the game. Like, later stages of the game, you won't be able to come back up here, but it's still a nice little little thing. I mean, you can get quite a beautiful view of Hogwarts from up here. So, let's just go. Let's head back to our flying lesson. Just go all the way back down, then. So, there we go. But, you know, let's see if I can if I can get a few more a few more of those things over there. A few more beans. So, let's see. This one doesn't normally give you much, but, yeah. Guess I was right. Doesn't give you anything, so let's just keep on going. Flying, flying lessons are right through you. here. Let's go in. Welcome to second year flying. Although you all apparently learned to fly last year, the apparently is directed at you, Mr. Longbottom. A refresher course is in order. Mr. Potter, would you please come over here so we can run through the basics? Please, would you fly up slowly? So yeah, you can just configure your Good stuff start. just like that. Now return to hover above the ground again. Yep. Yep. the The game will just take in whatever your first whatever your first things are. If you want to press down to go up and up to go down, then that's what it'll it'll do. If you press up to go up and down to go down, well, it'll do that also. Luckily, you can switch it. I personally prefer the latter, so that's what my configuration is going to be. Good. At least you have broom control, however basic. Let's try something a little more difficult. I assume you can see the magical rings. Kindly fly through them all for me. Yep, so here we go. Just uh, flying through, through each of these rings. They'll usually appear incredibly small to a head, but but essentially, you get got to fly through. You, they enlarge whenever, you, whichever one you have to fly through next. It's pretty straightforward, but trust me. First, first time you do this, it won't nearly be as easy as it looks. Well done, Potter. I think you're ready to take this year's flying exam. You have approximately two and a half minutes to fly through as many rings as you can. Your course through the rings will get progressively more difficult, and only the most expert flyers ever manage to complete it. So yeah, here we go. Flying lesson. Pretty simple. Straightforward. The idea is just fly through as many rings as you can. By my estimation, I think there's about 100 of them total. And my personal record is 99, so that's, that'll get you the highest grade here, though. I can't really remember what that grade is right right now. It's it's definitely above an A. It has a special name to it, but it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. And trust me, if you think that this is all it's going to be, then you're wrong. Because you said that the that the course will get progressively harder as time goes on. And we already we've gotten through the first 25 rings now at this point. So yeah, there's our indication. Then then the rings will start changing color then to indicate that they're getting harder and harder to fly through. And Trust me, this game is very, very generous when it comes to flying through these rings. There will be points in this game where, where you'll ultimately just think, oh, I missed a ring, but then it turns out, what do you know, you actually managed to fly through it. But yeah, like I said, don't think that, that this will be easy, then in the slightest, because I'm, I'm just making it look easy because I've been playing this game for a long, long time. Like, I think I got this game when I was nine or something, yeah. Nine sounds about right, but yeah, gotten through just about half of the, the rings right now with half the time left. So here we go. The less, and here's a good hint: the less time you turn, the the, the less time that, that the game 
that, that each of the rings essentially or the less the less time you turn the faster you go overall so that's what, what makes it pretty good yeah you'll just just keep on trying to fly through as many of them as you possibly can. These rings are especially difficult because they have a tendency to move around a lot, but like I said, even if you go towards the... you don't have to fly directly into them. If you can manage to touch them in any way, shape, or form, that also counts, so... But it gets pretty difficult, especially with, the, with these, these red rings, so just do your best, then. You see what I mean? They just keep on moving like that. It's progressively more and more difficult then, so here we go, just keep on flying through, alright, only a little bit of time left, let's see how well I can do, congratulations Mr. Potter, a truly outstanding performance. You really are one of the most talented flyers I have ever seen, and you deserve the highest grade, a distinction. Oh, so that's what it was called, a distinction. Uh, well, I didn't manage to get to my record, but yeah, just so you know, I've managed to get to get up to 99, so I can only assume that there are 100, all things considered, since she said, yeah, it is possible to finish the course, but yeah, that's all I can say for the most part. was exhausting, Harry. I'm off to bed. See you later. It was exhausting to watch your to watch your friend fly around and do a difficult course. Very, very interesting. It's no wonder wonder Ron's grades are so terrible. But yeah, anyway. Just, just goes through, through like that. We're just left to do abs We're just left to do whatever the hell we want. Then after this point, there is nothing more for us to do. So we can just keep, keep on going around and around. If you want to, you can just look for more beans then to buy some more interesting items whenever friend George's shop happens to open. So, I mean, I don't. That's not really what I need to do right now. So I'm just going to. I'm just going to keep. Huh. Yeah, that's always amazed me about this game. You can just keep on, you can just keep on fi finding tons of beans in in these things, things whenever you hit them. Sometimes if you're if you're very very lucky, you can just keep keep on finding them over and over and over again. Okay, I'm just gonna play around with with these until I get about thirty then. No, I think I'm gonna go somewhere else. need two more, just two more and I can buy another wizard card for, from them when their shop opens. Ah, damn it! Man, I hate that. This part of the game is very, at least that little corner right there is very, very buggy. It's, you see, essentially, there's a hole somewhere in the terrain, which just ca causes that those beans just fall right through there and make them completely unretrievable. It's pretty annoying, but... I guess you just gotta deal with it. I mean, all game, most games have that have that existence somewhere. I remember falling through through a hole in Fortnite's map at one point. So, anyway, that's just about all we can do for right now. We haven't learned any new spells, and there's not not much else to to really do at this point. So yeah, let's just um let's just end the day. Point totals are being calculated. Slytherin. Ravenclaw.
Hufflepuff. Gryffindor. Now you see, under normal circumstances, if any one house was in the lead, he would he would ultimately say Gryffindor is in the lead or Slytherin is in the lead right there. But since we're tied for first right now, he's not going to say anything. And don't worry about Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff. They're just completely left out. They're just the outliers in this whole thing. They're never going to get nearly as close as it needs to ultimately make it. And there's nothing you can do about that. Though, wouldn't it be cool if you could? But anyway, let's just continue. Well, okay, guys. Well, that was officially the end of our first of our first day at Hogwarts. So, I'd like like to officially thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all again in the next part. <laughs>